Hey everyone, thanks for checking out this RhinoWorks instructional video. This video is going to show you how to replace the seal in one of our spray systems with a cast iron pump. All right, so you're going to need about 30 to 60 minutes to complete this job. Here's the tools you're going to need. This is a 25,000 shim. It's actually a piece of metal shipping strap that we've customized. You can use a nylon one. We've got two 13 millimeter sockets. They don't have to be sockets. Uh, it's easier than if you have wrenches, but wrenches will do. Uh, and if you have a ratcheting one, I would highly recommend it. Uh, it'll make your life easier because there's a spot later where sockets won't fit. You're gonna need a mallet. You're going to need a flat screwdriver and a piece of clean paper towel. You're gonna need, um, this is actually a 15 16 deep socket, and this is a 30 millimeter deep socket. They do not have to be this specific measurement. Uh, I will show you later in the video um, what you can substitute these for. This is a small pen flashlight. This is uh, the actual seal replacement kit. And you're gonna need a rag, and don't forget your safety gloves. You're also gonna need a pump, cast iron pump system. Optionally, you can use some industrial sealant, and if you have a particularly uh, dirty pump, uh, then it's not a terrible idea to have a wire wheel. So for the purposes of this video, uh, I've removed the front spout and the top um, valve mechanism in order to make it easier to film. First thing to do is remove the clamp holding the shaft onto the impeller. You're going to need two 13 millimeter sockets or some combination of sockets and wrenches. I'm going to go ahead and uh, speed this up here because, well, quite frankly, it's not that exciting. Next step is going to be to remove the four bolts that hold the pump to the actual uh, motor. Again, these are 13 millimeters, and if you have a ratcheting wrench, uh, this is going to make your life a lot easier because it is very difficult to get a socket in there. Okay, so here we've got the final step and that will allow you to separate the pump uh, a little bit and move on to the next part. Here we've got six bolts and you're going to go ahead and remove those. Again, I'll speed this up because it's not that interesting. The one thing to be cognizant of here is as you're removing this, there is a gasket here that you need to be careful of. So I'm going to slow it down so you can see I'm taking my time so that you can see um, where the gasket is, how big it is. And um, you're going to find throughout this video, I keep putting a gasket, that gasket in the wrong place, and it's always in my way. So take my advice and set that aside somewhere clean and safe so it doesn't keep ending up in your way like it did for me. Okay, so now we can see the impeller and we can remove the one half of the seal with the spring. We'll set that aside for later. Go ahead and pull the impeller off and set that off to the side as well. So now we're looking at the actual seal mechanism. So this is where you're gonna grab your, it doesn't have to be three quarters. It just has to be small enough to fit in the hole and deep enough to be able to tap with a mallet. So we're gonna give it a couple of good whacks and now you will see, and yeah, so there's an example of I put that gasket in the wrong place and it's in the way again. So yeah, set that aside. And there's the other half of the seal. Set that aside as well. Okay, so here's where we're gonna clean. Uh, we're gonna wipe off where the gasket was, we're gonna wipe off where the seal was, and the same thing on the engine. And so this is where if you have a wire wheel, uh, if you have a lot of rust or debris or buildup, uh, go ahead and use the wire wheel here. Now we're gonna grab our new seal kit. You'll notice it comes wrapped in paper and it's the same three pieces. I'm actually gonna reuse the existing one because it would be a waste to ruin a new seal. We're going to grab the three parts of the seal. There's a spring, a part covered in metal, and a part covered in rubber. So the metal part is going to go on top of the spring and onto the impeller shaft. Be very careful not to touch the tungsten component. Otherwise, you will get if you get any oil or debris in there, you will ruin your seal. And you'll have to do this again, and it'll be an expensive job that you do again. Okay, future voiceover guy back here again, just to talk a little bit more about these seals because I don't think I did it very well. So if you look at this part of the seal, you can see it's covered in rubber and then there's the actual metal tungsten parts. A little hard to see in this video, but essentially you want to avoid touching that 
tungsten component. Um, you don't want to get oils. You don't want to get any debris on there. You want to keep that as clean as possible. And if you look at the equivalent mating surface on the other half that we already used, basically you want those to be as pristine as possible. So what we're going to do is we're going to tilt the, um, the housing in here a little bit. We're just going to get it 90% of the way in place, just avoid touching the top. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our paper towel and we're gonna set it over top. And the reason I chose this is be, uh, this particular socket is because it has a big flat area and I can easily whack it with a hammer and it fits inside the uh, housing. So go ahead and get it in there nice and snug. You wanna make sure it's even all the way around. So if you look at that, you will see that it, it is flat and flush all the way around. There's no part that sits up higher than the rest. And if you flip it over here, it's hard to see on the camera, but if you look, you will actually be able to see if there are any gaps between the rubber and the metal frame. If you see any, flip it back over, put your piece of paper, paper uh, towel down and just give it a few more wax and get it nice and flush. Here's where we're gonna to wanna to take our 25,000th shim and insert it into the top of the pump. You can see here, it comes out on the left-hand side. Uh, you can use a nylon strap if you have one. Um, essentially, we want to prevent the impeller from rubbing on the wear plate. And that 25,000th gap is exactly what we need. But you need to be able to remove it later, so it needs to be long like we have here. You'll also see that the keyway, um, try to align it just past, if you imagine, the minute hand on a clock uh, at about 315. So just past uh, that one bolt. So if you look at this plate, there's a flat part. The flat part goes to the top. The angle part goes to the bottom. You're going to want to make sure that you put your washer on each uh, bolt and then the nut, and you're going to want to tighten it down. Just tighten it down kind of snug and then go back and, and tighten it really tight. And you're going to want to alternate when you tighten it. Every other lug and then across and then every other lug again until uh, they're all good and snug. So this is why I mentioned earlier, you want the keyway to align to about just after uh, 315 on the minute hand, and you're gonna wanna rotate the shaft on the engine to match. That's gonna make it as easy as possible to line this keyway in. So go ahead and put the bolts in loosely. You don't wanna tighten this. Uh, we're just trying to do this to give us a little bit more finger room. Um, so go ahead and press the pump directly to the motor, and you're gonna wanna insert those four bolts and uh, I'm going to speed this up because it's not that exciting to watch me torque down four bolts. Uh, there isn't a specific torque setting here. Just make them good and snug and alternate them. So do one and then it's diagonal and then the other one and it's diagonal to make sure that you're not um, twisting the frame in any capacity. Go ahead and tighten these down. Again, a little bit on one side, then a little on the other. Once they're both snug, go ahead and tighten them down. No specific torque setting, just good and tight. Now all we need to do is remove the shim and test that everything works as we need it to. So go ahead, pull the shim out and go ahead and pull the engine over a couple of times. It should, um, it should turn over very smoothly and easily. You should not hear any metal grinding. If you hear metal grinding, then that means the shim wasn't seated correctly and you're gonna need to go back through and redo all of those steps. Okay, future voiceover guy here. I just wanted to give some more clarification about that uh, shim and the spacing. So you can see the impeller against the wear plate. They're actually touching, and that is not good. You do not want those touching. So I'm gonna walk you through the steps of how you can adjust that shim without having to actually redo everything we just did. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna loosen just slightly the clamp holding the shaft of the impeller. We don't wanna make it loose, loose. We just wanna make it slightly loose so we can pry it with a screwdriver. And I'll show you what I'm gonna do with that in a moment. I'll just flip the engine over here so you can see inside. So if you look, you can see, uh, I've got the screwdriver in there leaning against that clamp. And as I move it, you can see the separation between the impeller and the wear plate. We'll cut back to this angle and you can see all I've done is I've wedged my screwdriver in there and you can see that I'm just putting in my shim. So you'll know you got it right when you can't take the shim out easily after you let go. So you may need to jiggle it a little bit. Once you've got that in there where you want it, now go ahead and tighten this down. Again, you don't have to torque it like crazy, just nice and tight. And then all you gotta do is remove the shim. And when you look, you'll actually be able to see a little gap between the impeller and the wear plate. 
and that's how you know you did it right. I hope you found this video useful. Um, if you have any other questions about what we've done here or any other RhinoWorks products, go ahead and visit us at our website, www.rhinoworks.com. Thanks a lot and have a great day.